Hey everybody, hope you had a great day. This is my lovely wife. Hello. Now, earlier today, while I was at work, I got a, a response from an old video I did, Saved by Grace, from this YouTube channel called Christian Truth. And his response was, I interpret the faith without works as dead as such. We do good works, not by our own power, but because God expects it of us. And we do it not to be saved, but because we are saved of the bondage of sin. Okay. So, you know, we prove all things, right? According to the scriptures. And first and foremost, strike number one, the, Christ, the, the, the scriptures say in 2 Peter chapter 1 that... 2 Peter chapter 1, my wife has a Bible too, because we are in agreement with the scriptures. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 20 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So, strike number one, that's clear. No private interpretation. So don't, don't, we don't interpret things of our own minds. We read the book. Okay? Now, if you got your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Give me a minute to keep that big. 1 Corinthians 14. And I'm going to start with verses 20 through 21, and I'm going to skip to verse 26. So, before I, before I move on, don't the book say no private interpretation? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. Now, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 20, says, Brethren, be not children in understanding. Mm. Howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. Because the scriptures say, when I was a child, I thought as a child. We all adults. So we have to increase our learning of the scriptures. Verse 21. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that they will not hear me, saith the Lord. Now, skip down to verse 26. It says, How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you have a psalm? Have a doctrine, have a tongue, have a revelation, have an interpretation. Mm. Let all things be done unto edifying. So that's clear. And we see that today. People always come up with their own philosophy instead of just reading straight book. Now, one more scripture. 2 Corinthians 11. Very next book, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'm going to start with verse 1. It says, Would to God could you bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Verse 3, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. See, when you read the book, it's straight, it's simple. Verse 4, for if he that cometh preaches to another Jesus, whoa, who? Another Jesus. This is Paul warning us that there's another people, that there's people going to come with other doctrines, other gospels, and another Jesus. He said, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So, the Jesus of the Bible, don't he keep the Sabbath day? Yes, he does. Amen to that. Amen. And don't, uh, 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 so that means this Jesus of the Bible was not born on December 25th, right? No, he was not. Praise God to that. <laughs> Praise God for giving us all knowledge, wisdom, and understanding according to his word. So, bottom line is, we cannot come up with our own interpretation of the Bible. We have to read it. Line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Study to show ourselves approved.
Recipes multiply. Now, to this Christian Truth YouTube channel. Once again, let me reiterate what was said. And I quote, I interpret the faith without works is dead as such. First and foremost, the Bible says without any private interpretation. Okay? It says, we do good works not by our own power. Oh, my wise queen said to me earlier, uh, well, by whose power? <laughs> you know? Because, oh, well, let me, let me read, let me finish this statement. We do good works not by our own power, but because God expects it of us. And we do it not to be saved, but because we are saved of the bondage of sin. Whoa. First and foremost, God gave us all free will. Then he gave free will to Adam and Eve in the garden. <laughs> and they chose what? To listen to the devil. To be deceived. God does not expect us to do anything. He wants us to obey him. And obedience is the key. Obedience according to his word written in the scriptures. But we have choices. And we basically have two choices. Serve him or serve Satan the devil. And that takes action, which are your works. And, and I'm like, you know, a lot of people say good works, but I'm like, what are good works? If it's not what's in this book, if it's not written in the scriptures, good works is what, feed the homeless or, 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 or give money to the poor for a week? Oh, uh, we got a whole year... This is our choice. It is a daily walk to do what's right in the eyes of the Lord, not in the eyes of man. Because man changes mind. Man is not stable. Man does not have the wisdom of God. And the last part of the statement, but but not, not to be saved, but because we are saved of the bondage of sin. Well, first and foremost, nobody is saved. <laughs> you know, And I'm about to read the scripture on that. And not saved of the bondage of sin. We, 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 no, we are saved of the bondage of sin. Sin is a choice. It, it, it is a choice of action. If, if you choose to sin, that's your choice. God don't make us obey him. He gives us the opportunity to choose right or choose wrong. If we saved of the bondage of sin, why... Why? Uh, then that, that, that's basically saying that we don't have to do anything. We can call on the name of the Lord and everything, we, everything going to be all right. We all going to make it into his kingdom. But the scriptures tell you otherwise, right? I'm going to read the scriptures. I'm going to stop babbling. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Verse 38, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Believeth on Jesus as the scriptures have said, not what man says. Go to the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy 8. Because... It's a lot of people, and it's sad to say, a lot of people don't really know the Jesus of the Bible. And he gave us plain instructions. This is our instruction manual. It is high time for us to start following it. Deuteronomy 8, verse 15, and verse 16. Verse 15. Who led thee through the, that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought. Where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who led thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he, that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. Who is this talking about? This talking about the Father? Turn to the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 10. Because Jesus told us 
No man has dealt with the Father. No man has seen his shape or heard his voice. 1 Corinthians 10. Beginning with verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual drink, and did all eat, I mean, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So that was not God the Father in the Old Testament. That's why I told you in the last lesson, this whole book is about Jesus. <laughs> but let me read on. Verse 5. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Whoa. It said God was not well pleased. Didn't Jesus tell you in the scriptures, I and my father are one? It said God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things. So the stuff written in the Old Testament is our examples so we will not lust after evil things. Ain't lust sin? Ain't that? Let me read on. <laughs> uh, that we should not lust after evil things as they also lust. Verse 7. Neither be idolaters. Whoa. Mm. You know when I was a child, I always wanted me a, a nice shiny cross. On my necklace, I never got it. I never got that cross. Thank God I didn't get that cross. <clears throat> now, don't get me wrong, nobody perfect, because I know I used to have that little Star David in my ears and on my fingers, but I never got that cross. The cross is a death symbol. That's the symbol of the Romans. <laughs> when you do your research on Emperor Constantine. That's another lesson. I'm babbling. He said, neither be idolaters as were some of them. Because what did they do? They turned around and started worshiping a molten calf. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Verse nine, neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted. They tempted Christ. And were destroyed of serpents. Mm. Then I'll just read about the serpents. The fiery serpents in Deuteronomy 8. He said. He said. Okay. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted. So that's a choice of your mind. Uh, let me see. First Peter. Go to First Peter chapter 1. And this will be last. For the moment. 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse 3. Let's be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which, which according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. Mm. Pay attention to that. So that means we hoping, right? Okay. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fate is not away, reserved in heaven for you. Whoa. So if it's reserved in heaven, we don't have it now. Ain't nobody saved now. Verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. It's going to be revealed when the Lord returns to save us. Verse 6, wherein, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Hmm. So why are we in manifold temptations if we saved, if we saved by grace, or if we saved by, uh, what, what did the brother say? Saved of the bondage of sin. I'm confirming what I'm telling you. Verse 7. It said manifold temptations. Verse 7. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of of Jesus Christ. When is it going to be found? At the appearing of Jesus Christ. Is Jesus returning yet? No, he hasn't. And it said, at the, the, the trial of your faith, we are in trials now. So, 
That's why the book says the dead in Christ shall rise first and those that are alive will meet him in the air. Then we're going to come back down and reign with Christ a thousand years if we be so blessed. We are in trials now. We, matter of fact, I'm sure I'll prove it to you. I'm sure I'll prove we in, we in trials now. I'll go, I'm going to go to the Old Testament now. I'm coming right back. Go to Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12. That's before you get to Isaiah and um, Songs of Solomon. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14. Verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Mm. For this is the whole duty of man. That's what we're supposed to do. Verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Whoa. <laughs> With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That's why I did the lesson. Faith without works is dead. Saved by grace. What? Question mark. Because <laughs> ain't nobody saved yet. We got to put in our works to show and prove to God that we love him by keeping his commandments. Now go to the New Testament. Go to Matthew chapter 12. And this is actually a precept from the Old Testament. But Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. It's Jesus talking. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Mm. Hmm. So we got to watch what we say and we got to watch what our works, which is what we do. Verse 37, for by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words shalt thou be condemned. Case closed. So anybody that tell you they saved by grace or this like this statement, saved from bondage of sin? Don't believe it. Let's 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 get on one accord with the what the scriptures say and study some more. Bottom line.